So yes, do make use of the chat button. So this is week two of our um, how to get creative with materials you might already have around the house so we can add flowers to them. So we may not be able to go out and buy flowers. We may not have beautiful gardens to pick flowers, but we could use this time to create some lovely containers and it'll keep us busy. And as we're working on the containers, we could be thinking about what our dream flowers would be that we would put inside. So um, I shall get on and um, the, the, I, I'm going to ask you, <laughs> stumbling with my words here, to suspend your imagination. It's quite difficult showing you what to do when I'm sitting in front of the computer, but in my best Blue Peter style, I have got some containers that show the progression through the process. And this isn't a quick process, what I'm going to show you today. So I've been filming my YouTube videos at the same time, and I would say it's probably taken me four days of YouTubing and filming to get to my finished product. So there is a lot of drying time, so it's not something that can be rushed. The short cuts you can take, but it's not to be rushed. And I think we need to be embracing that. Um, you know, it's not quite locked down now, but majority of us are staying at home. These jobs don't need to be done tomorrow, today, quickly. They are things for you to think about when you have the inclination to do it. And I think it's probably sometimes quite nice to do something a little bit slower and more methodical. And you can take the opportunity of developing what you're going to be making as time passes. So you might start off thinking, oh, I'm going to make X. But during the course of your creative process you might actually end up making Y and that might be all the better for it. So don't put yourself under pressure number one to do what I'm doing. Um, it's just a, a, another resource for you to have so perhaps when you're feeling you know a bit low a bit down the dumps you might think actually I'm going to go back and look at that video that Julie made because I've got something that will be really good for it. So it's really good just for the mind as well to be thinking about it. You don't have to physically be creative, but thinking about being creative as well. So the first thing that we need to use is plastic milk bottles. So I'm guessing, like me, you've got plastic milk bottles. We did for a while go back to having a traditional milkman because we didn't like the idea of having, you know, just tons and tons of these bottles, but it got very expensive. So I'm sure probably everybody is getting their milk in these plastic containers. So this is just a very ordinary, boring plastic container. If you've got a more interesting plastic container, go ahead and use that. But I quite like the fact that it had a handle on it. And I thought I could make this into a jug. So with the magic of a pair of scissors and a few extra bits and pieces, I'm going to fashion this into a jug, which if I'm totally honest, still looks a little bit like a milk jug, but perhaps you could spend some more time being extra creative and adding in details. So I've washed out this bottle and I would say, make sure you wash it out first because you don't want it smelling. And a bit like the tin cans we did last week, this is going to be an object of art and beauty. It isn't the most practical of containers, so I'm going to be putting an insert in it again. So you just want to make sure there isn't any milky residue in it to start with because you're never going to be able to get rid of it. So the first thing I will do is cut the label off. And for me, this is just a plastic label. Cut that off. And then, oops, uh, I should have put my darker clothes on. I'm going to cut out a shape of the mouth of the containers for the jug. We could, it would just be too easy for me to say, add water, stick a flower in there. That's too easy. So I'm going to cut out a shape. And if you feel that you want to, you could take a marker pen and you could mark where you wanted your line to go. But I'm just going to go freestyle. There's no right and no wrong about this. And what I need to do is, I pinch my jug together in order that I can make that vital first cut. And then oops, I can go around and shape the mouth of my container. So I'm aiming for something, all oh, that water, I've just washed it out and it's dribbled down my leg. Oh! <laughs> I'm going to have to Yes, I should have drained that perhaps before I started. But you see now it looking, you know, it's a bit, you can imagine the, the flowers going into your container. 
And then what about adding in a spout? Now I did try gluing this on and it's really hard. I found gluing plastic to plastic. So what I'm going to do is cut up again. I'm white on white conscious. You can't quite see me. So I'm going to cut the head off here. So I've now got a piece shaped like that. It's a bit like a toucan's bill on the side. But I do know from experience, I need to cut this down again. I'm cutting it in half. Two pieces which I'm going to put together. Can you see that again? So I've got the bottom line here and the curved line at the top, and I'm going to use a stapler to staple it together. You could be using, you know, this could be your life's work, ladies, trying to design a spout. I did try making it out of um, a toilet roll holder cut down, and I did have some avocados that had a nice shaped cardboard insert so whatever you can find in your recycling box and when I open this out it's got little wings and you can see if I hold that up to there it does look slightly more like a spout on a jug so that is your basics for getting your pot done now you're going to say to me how are you going to fit this spout onto your container and disguise the fact it's just a white plastic container so in an ideal world i would say ladies you need to go out and buy some mod rock do you know what mod rock is if you've got primary school age children in your life or grandchildren it's the bandages that you would when you break your arm the plaster of paris bandages you can buy these bandages you put them in water and you can model with them well i'm trying not to buy anything at the moment so i've been exploring ideas of how i can make my own mod rock and um let me share my secrets with you so the first thing you'll need is poly i actually use polyfiller and then i ran out of polyfiller and i discovered that we had some molding powder which I think is basically craft polyfiller, but it sets really quickly. And then to get the, the bandage effort, I've used kitchen towel. So you need, I'm, I'm guessing you've got kitchen towel at home. Possibly you might have polyfiller in your um, stash of DIY equipment. And if not, perhaps you've got UPVA glue. So let me take you through the polyfiller bit first of all. Now you don't, this is when you, want, you have to suspend your imagination for a while. You don't want me to watch me mixing up polyfiller. You know how to do that. The only thing I would say is don't follow the instructions on the can because the polyfiller is made to fill in the holes in your wall. We want it to be a bit more liquidy because we're going to soak the kitchen towel in the polyfiller and then plaster it around the container. So what I used was, because I had been decorating uh, my daughter's bedroom, we've got a paint tray. So I thought this would be a really good idea to imagine I'm pouring in my polyfiller into the paint tray. I'm tipping in water, I'm mixing it up, not with my fingers, but with a spoon or a knife, whatever you use to mix it up with, until it's about the consistency of double cream before it's been whipped. So, so it needs to be reasonably thick, but not stodgy thick. And if it does start to set, and I did find that molding plaster did, was setting before I could really finish using it, but the, poly, the polyfiller seemed to be slower drying and therefore was quite handy. And then I took pieces of kitchen towel, which sometimes I folded, sometimes I cut into smaller pieces, but I then used a sprayer to moisten them. So I would spray each piece and then I would, let, imagine I've got polyfill in this reservoir here, I would lay it into the, the, the reservoir of polyfiller. Sometimes I gave it a squeeze, but you don't want to squeeze all the polyfiller out. And then I added it, I'm sorry about this, it's white on white on white. I then added it, imagine that as a polyfiller filled, made up bandage, and I coated the whole of the container in this. Now I have got something to show you, but it fell apart just before I came live. So just bear with me while I just do this under the table. So that was my pre-prep. Again, you can't see that really, but it's pieces of kitchen towel with polyfill in it that was sticking like that. 
and it came apart because I'd only done one section on it. And I don't know whether you can tell, but it's dried out. It's got some textural quality. Again, it's white on white. There will be a VETA video coming. But that is how I basically put a polyfiller bandage over my container and went round and round. And the beauty of the polyfiller is, I'm just going to get like that, is that as you're working with it, you do have a bit extra on your hands. It's quite a tactile job to do, and you need to make sure you're doing this outside or somewhere where you can put dust sheets down. But you can smooth it over, so you can choose to have quite a smooth surface, or you could choose to ruckle up the um, kitchen towel, so you've got more of a textured surface, so you've got quite a bit of play with it. The only thing I would say with my moulding clay, the moulding plaster, it was drying very quickly and I ended up with quite a lot of lumps and bumps on it. And what I did then was with a little, so I put one layer on and then I covered my little beak, my little spout, with the same wrapping of uh, polyfiller and then put polyfiller on the edges. And then because this was rough, this was rough, it adhered quite nicely. And I cut much smaller strips of the kitchen towel soaked in the polyfiller and I used it as you would do sellotape. And I just put strips on and it held in place. And now the more of the wrapping you add, you'll find that the jug becomes quite heavy and becomes quite stable. But if you decide you just want like a lightweight covering just to add a bit of texture in, you're going to need to fill the bottom of your container with polyfiller to weight it down a little bit. So the excess polyfiller I had, I then tipped it into my container. And so the bottom of my containers have got this solid weight of the polyfill at the bottom. And that is the other reason why I've put a jam jar inside to arrange my flowers, because if I added water, it's just going to mix with the polyfiller underneath. So do you want to see the real thing that I made? It's a bit of a, I know, a flight of fancy there, a bit of imagination, but it is a bit tricky showing you. Can you see what's over my shoulder here? So this was the first jug that I made. I'm going to take this out. It's, and it is quite heavy. Again, all the grey on grey doesn't really show up. So you can see that it's still the milk jug. And you can see that's my avocado pouch made into the um, spout there. And I did paint this white and then I decided that the white paint I was using, it's the same I used last week on the tin cans, was a bit too shiny. And I thought it didn't really go with having a rough, a rough hewn texture to my container. So what I did was take some acrylic paints, I squirted some white, paint and some black paint into a pot and then with the tiniest amount of paint I was doing this I was dabbing into the paint and then not actually dabbing on my hand but on a, another piece of newspaper and putting a bit of paint on and then doing everything I could to take the paint off and then going back to the 1990s you remember when we were all doing the sponging paint effects on our drying the walls I gave it as light as that a, a light coat and I went in with um, a pale grey and then I mixed a bit more black in it. So I think it's probably about three shades of grey that I've tried to just sort of deaden off the high gloss colour. And it's not showing up particularly well on the camera, but I will send you a photograph. So that was my finished um, pot, my number one pot. And having done that, that's when I thought, actually, I've taken ages because I put a single layer of kitchen towel on, then I doubled my layers up and then I tried to sort of put um, textural details in and I wasn't particularly happy with the way it turned out. But I think with the paintwork on it, it's worked really well. And then as I'm feeding my stems back in, I'm making sure they land in the jam jar. And these are, um, well, do you know what these are? I've picked them up from the wayside. So they're not cow parsley. You can leave me a comment to see whether you could tell me what they are. So if I show you the, what I think is the better arrangement, the better container, so having learnt, I then decided to go through and just apply a single layer of the, um, the Modrock, my homemade Modrock kitchen towel and polyfiller mix. And I didn't put any on the handle, because you've noticed on that one, the handle was quite chunky and I, it wasn't very well defined. And I decided that I wanted to add some string onto the handle. So this is my 
lighter detail one and that is the same that pinched bit of the, the staples that is the same construction in there and what i've done here is take the hot glue gun and you know a dot of glue and then cut off a length of string and threaded it round and round getting it to sit as tight as i can and then i only put about three dobs of glue on there and then finished it off at the back and then took some flowers from the garden and added those in so it's, and it's also added in my fresh cut flowers decal from last week so i was happy with that because i felt it looked like um the construction was more lightweight in appearance i felt that one was too earthenware and i preferred the Put that way around the lightweight quality of this one and i thought that looked better in terms of this sort of embracing the current farmhouse style so i will take some photographs of those against a gray background so you can see what i was doing and then i thought why don't i try something else entirely and that was to do away with the polyfiller altogether because I didn't by then I'd run out of polyfiller and um, I, I didn't like the gritty quality of the fast drying um, molding plaster so I thought why don't I just mix UPVA glue in with the kitchen towel and I guess what I'm doing is making a modern day equivalent of papier mache so I shall show you that and um, Joan's saying that she prefers this one, the writing. I'm really pleased with the writing, especially when you look from a distance. I think it does look um, I quite like it, you know, set on my kitchen window. So it's, it's close up. You can see all the lumps and bumps. It just depends whether you want to see lumps and bumps or you want it smoother. But I did prefer the more streamlined, lightweight application. And I've also had to put in, I can feel it's heavy at the bottom because I put the rest of the plaster in the bottom. So let's leave that one there for a moment. And then I was really delving in my recycling drawer. We weren't drinking milk fast enough at the weekend. So the next one I did was embracing the look of the enamel wear that we did last week. So this is a uh, kitchen towel soaked in a little bit of PVA glue. Now, when you pour PVA glue out, it's quite thick and gunky. So I did water it down slightly. And then because I've watered it down slightly, it took slightly, you know, a little bit of time to dry. And that's why I say these aren't immediate projects. They do have to factor in the drying time as well. And the paint I used was the um, Dulux Once Satin Wood, and that takes 16 hours to dry between coats. But I decided I was only ever going to put one coat on. So you can imagine that's why it took so long. Painted one day, and then I couldn't do anything, decorate it for another 24 hours. So what I've got here is a little tray. So that does look like quite like enamel wear, doesn't it? So it's, um, it's a plastic box that um, some portobello mushrooms came in. And this is, again, you can't quite see it, but it's, it's a single sheet of kitchen towel soaked in the PVA glue mix and then coated on the edge. So it wasn't individual bits like you might do papier-mâché. And then if I turn that around as well, I'm going wild with my decal stickers because that one says fresh cut flowers as well. And then the individual jars, they are little bottles. I'm sure you've all got these little bottles and jars you've got leftovers. And whereas you might put something on your windowsill like that, it's a little bit of a leftover, or you might have a jam jar there. I think when you put everything together in a pot and group it, it's got much more impact. And you're not, you can see that I've made it, I didn't do anything at the bottom, like that. And you group them together and it just contains it all as well. So when you're wiping down your kitchen window surface, that um, you're not having to remove, you know, six little bottles, they are just all in one go and you can just lift them across. So these are flowers I picked this morning from my garden. And um, as I said before, my garden is very green. I always think I don't have any flowers. But actually, I, I have. When I look, I have got flowers. So that is garlic. The white flower is garlic. And then petrol wallflower. 
that one there, and then native geranium. And I've repeated the same way through. So I have tried to get a consistency of colour. Everything actually in our garden, those things are pinks, red, blues. I, we don't really have any yellow or orange. So it's quite, quite a limited palette of colours and they go together. The long ones here are the forget-me-nots, which are, need to be pulled out of the garden, really. And, it, and then fitting them together. Oh, I've only put one flower in there, I didn't notice that. And then this has got mint in it, so that's cat mint and mauve flower. And then the, quite like the textural quality of this, which is a great hyacinth, which is, you can see the seeds are swelling, so it's starting to develop and they'll scatter around. So again, you know, you might overlook that as thinking it was a bit of rubbish, the flower had gone over. It's actually got quite a nice textural quality to it. And then I've just repeated it all the way through. And then here, the different ones here, I've picked um, a bud of peony and I've got some sweet william and then a tiny stem of wisteria that fell off the stem from the larger bunch of flowers. And you can see as I put that together, it's almost like I've bought a little bit of the garden inside. And it just means that as I'm standing at my kitchen windowsill, I am actually looking at flowers. And instead of overlooking them in the green of the rest of the garden, I can actually see what I am doing. So Sue is saying she loves the tray. How did you do the blue border? That was the same as last week. You remember I got, it again, it was acrylic paint. You remember last week I showed you on the can how you could do it with a Sharpie. And I found that the Sharpie wasn't adhering because my paint was too shiny. So I went straight to the um, acrylic paint and it was easier to do as well because there's quite a pronounced lip on here. And when I did my tin can, I was having to um, freestyle it a bit and I did get out some masking tape to try and make a neater edge. But here, because it's actually, I don't know if you can see it over there, it's slightly overhanging. It's a much more defined lip. So I went around the edge and I've also gone around on the top surface as well. So I think that does give a really good impression of it being a piece of enamel ware, which is all very on trend at the moment, this farmhouse style, the vintage style. And actually it makes me think, I've seen um, pie dishes like this at the charity shop and I should really have, have um, bought them and used them like that, but perhaps I don't need to anymore if I'm making my own. So the two together, I'd say these were my favourites, the, the last two. The grey was my practice and I felt much happier with the two, um, the, the, the lighter weight materials. Um, this one has a slight texture to it because it's got the polyfiller in it and the PVA glue with the kitchen towel on its own is a much uh, more streamlined, a flatter texture. Although of course my kitchen towel does have a texture on it. There's little air pockets it's got in it. So that is today's task. And with the flowers in here, all I have done is a cut and plonk. I haven't done anything special with those. I will show you though what I did. Literally, I went around the garden picking one of everything. So at the moment, we've got um, alliums in flower, but these the alliums are brand new to our garden this year, and I didn't feel um, confident enough about picking them because I'm sure my husband has plotted exactly where they're growing. But I'm allowed to take the peony and they open and close so this morning it was slightly more closed than this and I can see as I look out of the window we've got a few more open today so that's a lovely big flower but I've only picked one of them the gardener's just walking through the kitchen so I, that was as much for you as it was for him and um Sue, so you're saying, do you think it's best to do the blue line? But I did the blue line second. So I, I coated the pot with the, pot, the, with the PVA and kitchen towel mix. And then actually I painted the, when it had dried, I then painted it with my white paint. So although the kitchen towel is white, I've given it, it's almost like you're giving it a sort of a slightly hard a protective covering because the, the paint I was using was a satin wood gloss. So it has... You know, it's got a bit of a sheen and got a bit more protection. And also, if you're using papier-mâché, of course, as soon as you get a bit of water on it, it's going to start degrading. So I then, so pap, my posh papier-mâché mix, and then I gloss painted it to protect it. And then the last thing I did was to put the paint round the edge. 
and I probably did a couple of coats, but they were straight one after the other. I was putting it on and I could see sort of white streaky lines showing through. So it was the, it was the very last detail I did. And then in here, I've got a jam jar. So it's a matter of finding a container that sits inside. I did think actually a tin can would be good, but um, our recycling was thrown away too quickly. I didn't have a chance to rescue any tin cans. So that's in the bottom. Actually, I'll show you why that's not in there. I don't know whether you can see. You probably can't see. But that, you can probably see the black cracks on the edge. That is the couple of centimetres, centimetre or so, of the polyfill at the bottom. So the polyfill, I can feel it, is, is there. So that's the solid weighted container so it's not going to knock around and if you've ever used plastic bottles before you'll know that everything's really great and then you take your hands away and it wobbles and you've got to prop it up against a container so that's a really good trick for weighting it down of course when you add in your jar of water it'll weight it down a little bit more and what i've done here is all about the measuring see if i can push you back a bit further so you can see more of me that's a bit better so I put my largest flower in first and, I, and I, when I cut this this morning, I cut it back to the where it was branching off the main shoot. So it was really quite long this morning. I'm putting it back and trying to get it so the neck just rests across the top of the vase. When I first cut it down, I had it and it was sticking up like that and I didn't like the fact that I could see that little bit of neck there. So put that down low. And the thing I'm watching all the time is my jam jar inside is smaller than the opening and you just need to make sure i know it sounds obvious but as you're arranging your flowers that the flowers are actually going into the jam jar and they're not misfiring and going into the dry air you know the air around your jam jar and then i've got uh, wisteria i've taken off the leaves the wisteria looks absolutely beautiful on the bush but it's quite tricky to arrange with because the stems are quite brittle and they fall off so i would definitely take the leaves off and I wanted to use this to drape around without looking too, um, too sort of stiff and it's like one stem. So I've got a bit here that's flowing out of the spout of my jug, a bit that's flowing over and echoing the shape of the container, and then this other bit here coming over the edge of the container. And then as I say, it was a chance of one of everything, and quite often if you're going to the supermarket, you do get one of everything and we sort of think that looks a bit horrible but i think when it's one of everything from your own garden i think this garden of flowers is just naturally more beautiful you can get away with it and this is a sedum so it's a, a sort of purpley variety rather than the normal um sort of glaucous green for that and um pushing that in i'm arranging this backwards so um can't quite see what i'm doing and then for textural contrast, this is quite rubbery leaves. We've got a stem of speckis or lamb's ears, which is beautifully soft and downy. So that's a good contrast with the rubbery texture there. So I've tried, even though we've not got much in our garden, I'm trying to pick things that look different and um, we'll sort of showcase the best of what we've got. And you can see also I've been quite limited with my colour palette. Now the other end of my peony stem had the leaves on it. And you can see there where I cut my stem off, a nice example of a diagonal cut there. So don't always discard, you know, you've got the flower, but don't discard what else you've got. Now, the, we're coming to our last 10 minutes, so I'm going to take you all off mute. And I think, um, I'm not sure whether you can do that quicker than me. So question time, I can unmute you all. Oops, 